Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back once again to the Boston Roll channel. Today at the request of Patreon subscriber King of the Depths, I am playing Modern Exper Extraction. Did I just say Exper? Esper Extraction. This deck is a spin on a legacy deck that I played on the channel probably about a year ago at this point, where the plan was use Seagate or, or Seagate Stormcaller for fun and profit, doubling powerful proactive spells like Him to Turok and Cabal Therapy to shred the opponent's hand, and then use a main deck surgical extraction, both as a defensive tool, because a lot of decks do use the graveyard, but then also as a way to kind of do a mill strategy thing, the way mill puts cards in your graveyard for you and then takes them out of your deck and then sort of takes the fangs out of the cobra. And that's what we're trying to do here. This strategy in Legacy is extremely different because of two main reasons. One of them is him to Turok. That's a two mana spell that is devastating if you double it. Turn 4 becomes really dangerous with Seagate Stormcaller if Him to Turok is a card that's in your deck, but obviously that's not legal. In Modern, I have replaced it with actual Turok, who you can spend 4 mana to get a single Him to Turok and a 4-3 creature instead of 2 Him to Turoks and a 2-1 creature, which is a little worse, a little less tricky with the meme, but still is Him to Turok, still puts cards in the graveyard. The other major difference between Modern and Legacy was the Legacy deck played powerful enchantments like Moat to just shut the game down, where you extract some number of their threats and then Moat the rest of their threats, and then it won with Court of Cunning, which is a card that can end a game very quickly while also milling the opponent out and drawing you extra cards, and that card is not legal in Modern either. I had to analog the Court of Cunning with powerful card advantage Planeswalkers. That's what Soren the Mirthless and Hero of Dominaria to Fairy are doing in here. Outside of those two pretty big downgrades, the deck looks pretty similar. Got your main deck surgical, got proactive spells in Thoughtseize, Inquisition of Kozlek. Already talked about Tarak. This is a Snapcaster Mage deck. Seagate Stormcaller and Snapcaster Mage tend to be friends because they're sort of inside out versions of each other. Seagate Stormcaller doubles a spell up front. Snapcaster Mage gives you a second crack at that spell later, and they're both 2-1 creatures that can apply pressure to an opponent who is being disrupted. I have four Thought Scour in the deck because I think that getting cards into your opponent's graveyard is going to be really important here, and the cantrip is also important to keep our plan moving forward. If you're digging for something specific out of your own deck, like a Fatal Push, like if you have Snapcaster Mage chilling and you need a Fatal Push, you can target yourself. If you have the surgical and you're looking for a target, you can target your opponent. Thought Scour is a one mana cantrip that you can double with Se Seagate Stormcaller. So three mana, you get a two one and mill somebody for four and draw two cards. That's a pretty good rate. Thought Scour also turns on Drown in the Lock, which is obviously just one of the best spells that are in modern. This is in many decks that can choose to play it. Foundational card these days in Grixis Death Shadow. Actual Counterspell and Archmage's Charm round out our interaction here. There's two Prismatic Endings because we could. We are already in Esper for sideboard options and the Teferis. And just a couple of Prismatic Endings are the ones that I had room for. And I, I'm trying a copy of Dam. This card's really cool because if you overload it, it's still a Mana Value 2 card. Which I don't know. It, unless you just like have six mana, and really need to clear the board. Because obviously, Wrathing the board twice doesn't do anything, but Wrathing it once with counter protection 
Like, if the spell is doubled, then they have to counter it twice. I don't know if that's going to come up, but this is a two-mana spell that can play like a four-mana spell. Also pretty dope off Snapcaster Mage. It's only removal, like one one-shot removal off of Snapcaster Mage. You can't overload, because overload is an alternative cost, and so is flashback. And Snapcaster Mage grants a spell flashback. There are some cards like Jace Vrin's Prodigy, the backside of that, Telepath Unbound, I think, that just say, cast a spell from your graveyard, where you can overload. But Snapcaster Mage specifically gives it the alternate cost of flashback. But for four mana, you can just kill two things outright. I needed some answers to Murktide region in the main deck. That was basically where Dam came in. It could have been Doomblade, but I thought Dam would be more fun since we're in the, the three-color wedge. Sideboard is just full of cards that line up well against modern strategies. Gotta deal with Rhinos and Hammers somehow. Living End and Hammers and Rhinos here. One extra piece of Graveyard Hate because there's already three Surgicals in the main deck. Got our Dress Downs for Amulet Titan and Saga decks. Blossoming Calm. I have not seen this card in Modern very much. It might not be very good, but it's a card I was excited about when Modern Horizons 2 was previewed, and it is good against Burn here. It is fun to double this, gain some extra life. All those are options. And the plan here is pretty clear. We're basically an Esper mid-range deck that's trying to squeeze together proactive discard with reactive counter spells and just push for damage in between. Honestly, a pretty classic mid-range game plan, other than the surgical extraction aspect. That's the only super weird thing going on. But there it is. That's the deck. Let's jump in. I'm on the draw in the first round with a hand that is a little too reactive for comfort, but I'm not going to mulligan a hand that makes its land drops and has some spells to cast. Oh, lantern control. What's up? Oh, this is horrific. Okay, um, they are likely to fill their own graveyard, though, and give me targets for surgical extraction. I'm going to fetch for another Hallowed Fountain, because I don't want this Flooded Strand on top of my deck. I do get some card selection out of this. There's a Snapcaster on top of my deck. I'm going to ending the Lantern. They'll probably shuffle their own deck in response, unless they need this land. Targeting me. Okay, they made me shuffle away my Snapcaster. Sure. But guess what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna set a stop in their draw step and rip the lanterns out of their deck. How do we feel about lantern control with no lanterns? We got Codex Shredder, Ensnaring Bridge, and four lands over there. Show me this deck. They have one Ashiok, one Kaya. All right. They have one Ashiok and one Kai to actually win a game with here. I mean, they can't just turbo mill me. Oh, wow. Had enough. They let me look at their whole deck and get a screenshot. Screenshotted here. We can check after if it comes up later. But, uh, okay. Um, Chalice of the Void on one is really good against this deck. It turns off a lot of things in my deck, but that basically doesn't even matter. Chalice on one. They're not going to have any creatures, so Dam can come out. Fatal Pushes can come out. And Hexproof until your next turn. That does stop Codex Shredder. But <laughs> if I'm bringing in this Chalice, I don't really want more stuff like that. Consult the deck list. Kaya and Ashiok over there. They are an Ensnaring Bridge deck for the most part, but I also can win without attacking. Like I might want these Dovin's Vetoes. Rock is fine. I guess I don't really have room for Tobin's Veto. Is Veto better than Counterspell because they don't have any non-creature spells? I don't think they're really going to fight me on anything. It's just, do I think that blue-blue or blue-white is more attainable in this deck? And every single land except for the Orborg taps for blue, and only three lands tap for white. Yeah, I think Counterspell is more castable than Veto, and it otherwise doesn't matter. I could split them to respect... Surgical, which is a card that this deck plays sometimes. I haven't seen this deck in a long time, but here it is. Uh, Drown in the Lock. I guess since there's no creature removal, half of Drown necessary, switching it over to Veto might be better. 
That's just a cleaner counter spell that doesn't require any conditions to be met. Yeah, I'm into this. Let's do it. Prismatic Ending, Thought Scour, and Teferi. I'll keep this hand. Pretty stoked we got a turn two win in the first game ever with this deck. Main deck Surgical. It's not a thing I recommend, but sometimes it does just have Cheese Vector. Oh, did I know they were a Saga deck? I did look at this whole thing. I didn't even look at the mana base. Yep, there's just four Arsus Sagas over there. Well, wish I had my dress downs in. <laughs> I'm probably going to lose to that now. And I deserve it. Elod Fountain. We're going to end the Shredder. going to start casting spells. Didn't mill anyone on the way through. They're not going to be able to get any constructs off of this, but they will be able to tutor something up. Inquisition. Do you want Teferi or Thought Scour? Thought Scour is like low impact, but I also can't cast Teferi for a while. Master Shredder is back. I can tutor up a Lantern this turn. That's really dangerous, actually. Okay, I'm going to play Polluted Delta, even though they know. Like, that gives them information. Like, them having Shredder plus Lantern in play is the combo, and I need ways to manipulate the top of my deck because they're going to be doing it to me. If they get Pithing Needle here, then they didn't get Lantern, and I'm happy with that. Talisman, don't care about that. Okay, so I have to shuffle my deck here. They don't want Polluted Delta. The Hallowed Fountain. Okay, cool. This is great. This is exactly what I wanted. Now there's a good card on top of my deck. They target me with Codex Shredder. I target them with Thought Scour. I get to draw my Archmage Charm unless they sack their Lantern. And now they mill my Prismatic Ending instead. That one's also good. But I can steal their Codex Shredder. And who's the captain now? Ancient Stirrings. I'm just going to steal Codex Shredder immediately. Yoink. Is there one card in hand? Veil of Summer. Okay, good. It's not. Okay, I'm drawing Snapcaster. I have Veto. And I can start being the Lantern deck against them. Moment of Truth. What are we doing here? On an expedition map. Okay. I can find another saga that is kind of tough. Also lets them shuffle away this Inquisition. If I find a surgical, I guess I know it's on top of my deck, so I'm not just going to find a surgical. That's not how that works. Draw for turn. Snapcaster. There's another Snapcaster on top. I can snap ending their lantern, but their lantern's better for me than it is for them right now. They do have two mana to activate map. Yeah, I might just chill on Snap Thought Scour right now. Play Watery Grave Tapped while I can. I'm going to mill this Inquisition. They seem to want it. I don't want them to have it. Oh, that's much worse. <laughs> but I have Dovin's Veto. It's fine. Yeah, if they spend a turn doing this, then I can veto it. And then they get the Saga first. Up their Saga. Spire of Industry on top of their deck. White, blue, third of Ashiok. I gotta work my way through a saga. Not easy. It can be done. Play Sunken Ruins. That gives me Snap Archmage Charm. I'm gonna Codex Shred myself this turn so I don't draw a Polluted Delta. I'll let them draw Spire of Industry. And for five mana, I can regrowth something from my graveyard if that becomes relevant. Drawing another Spire of Industry. Don't care about that. I'm gonna mill this island. I don't want that. Oh, I was busy thinking about the Codex Shredder. Probably wanted to snap Thought Scour at the end step. I did bring in my Engineered Explosives. That's lucky. <laughs> All right. Watery Grave tapped. They can make Saga tokens. They can tutor something. They're drawing Spire of Industry, which I don't care about. Graftigger's Cage. Okay. I was just going to wonder what do they have in their deck that they would tutor for here. And... Graftigger's Cage is a good one, because they know I have two Snapcasters. But I can, in response to that, Snap Archmage Charm. Snapcaster Mage. Archmage Charm. Gain control of the non-sick construct. Then they can go ahead and tutor their cage. They might get just a Shredder instead, because this Engineered Explosives is a problem for them. They did get Cage, and it wasn't the Cage I saw, so they have more than one Grafdinger's Cage in their deck. I'm drawing Engineered Explosives, which I am into. I'm going to shred them. Don't really want to get Thought Seized. Yeah, enjoy that land. Explosives for one. That makes my construct bigger or the same size as theirs. 
If I attack, yeah, I'm just not going to attack. I'm going to lantern control them into the dust. Okay, if I block with Snapcaster and then low engineered explosives, yeah, I'll block with Snap. And I can explosives killing two of their artifacts, which makes that a thing a 2 2. I lose Codex Shredder. Oh, well, they have Craft Digger's Cage on top of their deck again, but I have Thought Scour on top of mine. Yeah, I think this is the time to do this. Bust Explosives. I lose the Shredder, but that's okay. They lose Cage and Lantern. Targeting me with Lantern on the way out. That shuffles away the Thought Scour. But I can snap Thought Scour anyway. Snapcaster, target the Thought Scour that's already in my graveyard. Power away that Graft Digger's Cage that I don't really want to play against. Found a surgical. Oh yeah. Gotta decide what I'm doing with that. Oh, that's a good one too. Okay, here's Teferi. Gonna attack for three. Bounce my own Snapcaster. Bounce Snapcaster. Play my land. I'm gonna stop in their draw step. And exile their Lantern of Insights. Or am I more worried about Urza Saga? I'm actually gonna knock out Urza Saga. Oh, they conceded in the draw step. They didn't even need to see the spell. <laughs> They're good. All right. Out lantern the lantern control. On to the next one. I'm on the draw with the most reactive hand, or proactive, most disruptive hand we've seen yet, both reactively and proactively. Hope it's good. Botanical Sanctum. What tech plays that card? That's a weird one. We're, gonna, uh, we're about to find out. Inquisition you. It's like Neoform or some artifact strategy oh no it's living end and i missed okay all right fair enough i have the drown in the lock that will be good like leaning on thoughtsies is the one that guarantees that you'll find a hit but normally like normal decks are built so you can like curve inquisition up into thoughtsies punished in this sp specific case the grief can strip my drown in the lock then we're in trouble you have a ton of interaction, though, both with the graveyard and with the hand. Yeah, they took the drown. No surprise there. Guess I'm casting Thoughtseize, whether I like it or not. Activating Master of Waves in response, so they get to look at their top two cards, and I get to take whichever one they liked out of it. Two Street Wraiths. All right. And I'll play a Hallowed Fountain tapped. Street Wraith on top of the deck here. Please don't come up with a win the game card. God, they shocked it in. So dead. All right. If they have the thing, we lose. Uh, turtle rebuying violent outburst. Okay, that's a cool trick. Ottawara, they can violent outburst here. Oh, they can cycle strike for Riverwinder first, and then outburst. Is there any universe that I can win this game? I have Dam. I can draw Dam. All right, that's the one thing I can do. The living end happens. They get to grief and. All right, they stacked it wrong, so they architects first. I, I needed that to happen to have a chance here, because architects can like fate seal me, but then I need to shuffle in order to fatal push, which shuffles away the damage that architects just did. I'll put water grave into play tapped, and I get to fatal push something here. Probably grief, though I'm sure it doesn't matter. Just pick one of the two four drops, kill them, and then. Carry on. All right. I have a one outer I can hit here. That was not it. Needed that. Turn ago. Yeah, we're dead. Okay. Yeah, that lined up pretty well for them. Just went from random draw to living end in a turn cycle. But their deck's built to do that. And didn't draw any of my surgicals, where I have many in the main deck. Okay. Piling up the interactive spells here. Graveyard hate. Dam. Engineered Explosives, not great here. Fatal Push, real bad. Prismatic Ending, real bad. Fatal Push, Prismatic Ending. Inquisition's awkward, because it can miss, but like all of their payoffs, like the, the Shardless Agents and Violent Outbursts, are all threes. I'm not going to get weirded out by last game. Turok's kind of slow and shitty. So it does get huge if they're just cycling, looking for a way out, uh, a, a way into living end. 
It doesn't care how your opponent discards a card. It just cares that they do, and cycling is discarding. Turok might be better than Soren. Big Teferi, little Turok. Yeah, the Turoks might be better than the two Planeswalkers, just due to the nature of my opponent's going to have to get crazy to win the game. If we transition into the them casting their big idiots phase of the game, though, my, my bros are better, the, the Planeswalkers. All right, Planeswalkers over Turok, I've decided. Okay, let's do it. There's a lot of hate and interaction in this deck, but Living End is extremely powerful right now. On the play with a Thought Seize and a Teferi. You can't Cascade with Teferi in play. Those are the rules. I don't make them, but I will enforce them. And now I cannot be fooled into casting Inquisition instead of Thought Seize because that's the only thing I have. Or some Negation, Shardless Agent, and two Cyclers. Stripping the Force lets Teferi get through. Yeah, I'm going there. They didn't have gemstone thing, so they can't like steal the play on me. They would need grief. It's land go from me, unfortunately. Didn't pick up a spell there. Atawara, instead of any other land they could have played. We do have a Misty Rainforest over there. And I line this turn up to slam to fairy, so that's what I'm gonna do. The fairy, let's go. Cycling architects in response and. Going again in response, and we're in. Okay, cool. I'm going to draw a card immediately. I would like to bounce a Snapcaster Mage, but you don't always get to do that. They can cast Shardless Agent as 2-2 two -two creature here. There it is. Living in, they can't cast 2-2 two -two creatures in play. I'm going to set stops in their draw steps. All right, they can grief take one of the two Snapcasters, but I have two of a kind over here. A good one. All right, I'm gonna plus to fairy, play Luda Delta, and I'm gonna snap Thought Seize them in their draw step. Draw for turn, and then Snapcaster, Thought Seize, Violent Outburst. I guess I have to take it. Don't even get to pretend it's not there. But two lands in their hand. Agents getting rowdy. I'll block. Okay, now we got to fairy chillin'. Counterspell in hand versus Forest in hand. Gotta win the game now. Plus to Fairy. I could Thought Scour now. Yeah, I have creatures and sorceries I might want. Alright, that's a good one. I'm gonna play the Watery Grave tapped because they can't cast two spells this turn. I don't need to take two to leave up double counterspell. Scouring them might have been a little reckless here. Considering I already have the... Their graveyard is already stocked and everything. Counter that. Another Thought Scour. All right, I have the opportunity to scour myself this time. Probably better. Put another Teferi in my graveyard and a Hall of Storm Giants. Teferi can draw an extra card next turn. And we're just holding the fort. Ottawara can remove Teferi without casting a spell. That's something I gotta pay attention to. I draw a card with Teferi. I've been avoiding playing this Urborg because that lets them cast Grief when that's otherwise not a thing they can do. But I'm not going to skip a land drop, and I do have two counter spells here. I can hit Grief. Heartless Agent again. Counter spell that one also. Endurance, Grief. Nothing super exciting there. I'm going to draw two with my Charm. Inquisition. I can do that in their next draw step. Land plus to fairy. There's not a lot of cards in their deck Inquisition hits, but the ones it does hit are really important. Like that one, Shardless Agent, get in the bin. Spiked it. I think there's one fetchable land left in my deck. Oh, they're conceding before I need to find out. Okay. To fairy, coast to coast. Taking that force of negation over the Shardless Agent on turn one was that entire game. I don't know that anything changes here. Like, Bo Blossoming Calm can brick a Grief. That's a, kind of a pretty big game. Really into the discard spells to fight over Force and Negation with the Fairy. They're on the play this game. That is of slight concern. We still haven't seen any of my main deck Surgicals that are all still here chilling. I don't think I bring in Blossoming Calm just for Grief. Like, what would I cut? It would probably have to be 
Big Teferi or Soren. Could be the Stormcaller. That's actually pretty medium. The so doubling surgical extraction is a heater. Do I want Stormcaller out for Blossoming Calm? Stormcaller can punch a discard spell through a counter spell. Also, we've learned that the the post Teferi game plan is put a 2-2 into play, so I think I want more two power bodies just around. Blossoming Calm would be such a blowout though, if they just sculpt a turn where they're gonna grief me and then go off, and I can Blossoming Calm and Counterspell. Oh god, it's giving me goosebumps. I'm gonna shave Big Teferi. Big Teferi better or worse than Soren. They're very similar. Alright, Big Teferi. You're back in, Soren's out. Uh Stormcaller's out and Soren's back in. Yeah, I just think Stormcaller is actually kind of shitty in this matchup. First appearance of surgical extraction in the league. Or in the in the match. It was pretty effective in round one of this league. I'm gonna keep Oh, you have Leyline. Nasty. Okay. Surgical doesn't care about that. All of my discard spells do though. I'm gonna Shock in Hallowed Fountain, leave it untapped. I'm gonna Thought Scour myself. Curator of Mysteries in the bin. Scouring myself draws cards and could put creatures in my graveyard. Thought Scour me. Dovin's Veto and Counter Spell up. Nice. Even drew Dark Slick Shores right on time. If I can get a Living End in the graveyard, then I can extract the rest of them. Depending on. How early they pop the living end. They might do it right now. I counterspell grief what happens. Then they get to cast another thing. My hand is actually pretty juiced up against grief. Go ahead. I have two counter spells. We can't take them both. And the surgical is hanging out there too. If they take that, I can snap it. I'm actually in like reasonable shape here. They probably take Dovin's veto, because they can't force a negation it back. They could just take Soren and plan for the long game. I don't know what they're gonna do. We're all gonna find out together. Did take Veto. All right. Wow, just slamming the Shardless Agent. Is there a counter spell they can cast for zero? Oh no, yeah, they are choosing to opt out of Living End. They're just playing their two-two creature. Okay. Um, solves. Yeah. Go nuts. And end of turn, I can exile Grief. We have two Violent Outbursts in their hand. Okay. I exile these Griefs. And then I can snap Surgical, taking the Curator of Mysteries. I don't currently have a Swamp in play. It'd be hard to play this game without a Swamp, but at the moment I'm good. And their Graveyard has one creature in it. And if they trade off the creature in play, then... I will have another creature in my graveyard. And they can't cast those two violent outbursts with the mana they have anyway. And they know I have a counter spell too. Another shardless agent, okay. You're gonna cast the spell this time. Are casting the spell this time. Let's counter that. Have it in the graveyard for next round. Or for the next surgical. Definitely trading off the snapcaster. And jamming Soren here. And hope they brick on. Red mana for a turn. That's kind of the strat. They do have to put a swamp into play in order to cast Soren. Oh, jeez. Jeez. I was about to have to think about leaving up Snapcaster for Counterspell or just jamming my Planeswalker, and now I don't have to think about that. I'm going to make a lifelink vampire and cast Chalice on zero. Shields up. They did draw the red mana. They can't cascade into living end now well they can but they can't cast it their hand is just two bricks plus soren uh yes i would like to pay two life to put drown in the lock in my hand and soren's minus two all right yeah i'll pass for this turn interesting they shocked in this steam vents when they weren't going to cast the spell just didn't want that two life i can snap cast her but i don't need to so i won't and make another vampire. I can counter an endurance, which is like one of the only things I'm worried about here. Starting to pull this one back. Surgical snap surgical turned out to be a pretty good thing to do. Still not gonna get greedy. Hey, I can surgical their living ends. 
Activate Soren. Uh, yes, I will put this Teferi in my hand, thanks. Slam this, buddy. Got a Force of Negation, or are we done? Feel like we're done anyway, but you can Force of Negation. I did make a number of choices in my deck and sideboard with the Cascade decks in mind, and they paid off here. This Teferi and Chalice. Squeezed them a little too much in a little too many directions. Nice. 2-0. and oh. Keep it rolling. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the draw in round three with a one lander. I'm on the draw with Thought Scour. I'm going to try it. There's 21 lands in this deck. Let's roll. Uh oh, a Bloodstained Mire. Are we burn or are we casting a discard spell? See you later, Thought Scour. Unless they're on that Ragavan life, then they might take the Fatal Push. They did, did take Fatal Push. Draw a land? That's not a land. All right. Let's go. Raven Cairns. All right. It's getting weird. Healthy Voidwalker. Well, better respond to that one. Uh, Watery Grave, I think, is where I want to be. And I'm going to Thought Scour my opponent in response. But they're already at Drown in the Lock levels of efficacy. Now I'm going to Scour myself. On Prismatic Ending, Mill to Land, of course. All right, deck. Amy. Built. All thoughts ease you. Liliana Croxa. Fatal push. King Liliana. Uh, Croxa's coming up quick here. Uh, that is not the Bloodstained Mire that was in their hand a second ago. We can discard Seagate Stormcaller. That card sucks ass. And I'm not going to give them a Teferi under Dothy Voidwalker. Land. Shit. Oh, bummer. I think this game is actually, like, kind of fine without being stuck on one land. Oh, Extraction. Uh, that's exciting. I'm going to stop in their draw step and extract their Croxa. They fatal push two Bloodstained Myers. There's two more Croxas in here. I'm going to screenshot their deck for future reference. Voidwalkers, Dens, Lilianas, CZPZs, Ragavans. Yeah, this is that Rakdos thing. Okay. Well, their hand is bad. Uh, Den of the Bugbear is going to shred me now, though. Like, I needed to remove Voidwalker last turn, remove Den this turn. Yeah, I don't have a way back into this one. Fatal Push and Dam both seem good. Engineered Explosives. They appear to have a token part of the deck. The Season Pyromancers, Ragavan makes treasures, Den of the Bugbear makes 1-1 one, one goblins. They have Inquisitions. There's two Inquisitions and four Thoughtseize and three Turok. Yeah, Blossoming Calm actually does look good. How good is Chalice? It's like fine, but not really what we're doing here. Okay, Damn Fatal Push, Blossoming Calm, like all those. Surgical does matter. Uh, they are Crocs a deck. Are they doing anything else out of the graveyard? They have Attack Anuma. But no, mostly not. Having a Surgical to look for for Croxa is nice, but you can't afford dead cards in a matchup like this. They're trying to get scrappy. Right. I had expressed interest in Engineered Explosives as well. The Fairy is kind of not great. Which is weird to say, because that card is usually great. Nothing in their deck costs more than three. I can shave on Thoughtseize, try to play to the board a little more. Alright, I'm cutting both Stormcallers, a Thoughtseize, a Teferi, bringing in his removal spells. I gotta try to get up on top of them with Soren or Teferi. That's kind of where this game has to go. Can I get a turn one blowout with Blossoming Calm, please? Uh, no, but I will keep this hand. I go straight to 15 to Thoughtseize them. Got Lightning Bolt, Fatal Push, Liliana. All right, and it's not very good. Did they see any targets for Fatal Push last game? That's interesting that that's still in the deck. Inquisition, not upset about that one. I would like to find the land though, quickly. Back up Liliana, you were gonna draw on those. I am not gonna crack this fetch land. I wanna leave lands in my deck to draw. I guess they saw the Teferis last game. 
Lightning Bolt is good to get the pressuring to fairy. So we'll give it that. Land, please. Shit. Good. Did what I could this time. Time for Liliana the Veil. Thought sees, yep. Can't interact with that one. Took the Teferi. There we go. Alright, third land operational. I think Archmage Charm to start drawing cards is going to be a lot better than trying to snap Thoughtseize this hand right now. Ah, oh, that was their best card they could ever have. Yeah, like literally the best draw on their deck, and it's not even close. Okay. Kroxa will get to kill one of my Snapcasters. And then this thing can arrive next turn. I can counter it next turn. I'm going to get a Hallowed Fountain. I'll pay the life. Their hand is Bolt Fatal Push right now. Draw two. How about that Surgical Extraction I left in the deck? King to rock. Those about to rock. Oh, I cannot play to rock right now. I need to protect myself from Kroxa. To rock just gives them the fifth card for Kroxa. It also dies to both of the removal spells in their hand. Old Pyromancer. I'm going to counter this thing. I can snap counter the Crocs in next turn, but I don't want them turning these two bad spells into two good spells. And just play my fifth land and pass. Den of the Bugbear. Tilt. I'm going to draw cards here. Snapcaster. Target Charm. Draw my cards. Give them a target for Fatal Push. All good. Drown in the Lock can hit Croxa. Fatal Push can hit Den. I don't think... Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so... Drown and Lock currently doesn't actually hit Croxa. So I play Urborg. And I can... To rock them. That gets the hand empty. They can't activate Den and cast Croxa. Yeah, I'm gonna Karak Conqueso here. Lightning Bolt lines up pretty well against it. I questioned that card. Oh, they're going face. Okay, letting me have my, my homie deal. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, I can still drown in the lock of Croxa. Or kill a den of the bugbear. Anything needle resolves. Probably names to fairy. That's the activated ability they've seen this game. Yep. And here comes Croxa. I'm going to drown it. Hope I counted correctly. I counted like three times. I hope I didn't fuck this up. Nope. All right, figured it out. Exactly two cards left in the graveyard. I don't imagine their deck cantrips very well, so they probably don't have a lot more coming. Damn! Attack with Tarak. We've seen Liliana of the Veil, so I'm gonna sandbag this land. They can exile CZPZ, or fire up Den, or cast a fresh CZPZ from hand and draw two cards. Real good. I can damn that one. Okay, now I have an extra Delta that can turn on Fatal Push. Tarak can block Season Pyromancer, and I can save the dam for tokens afterwards. Alright, I'm gonna chill. Yeah, that was fucked up. They drew one of their engines just in time for me to fail to draw one of my engines. Fatal Push is way more important to spend on Den of the Bugbear than it is on Season Pyromancer. Okay, we're going into the Den, and I'm gonna push the Den before it gets to attack. They are one card away from Croxa. Need my deck to deliver here. I am gonna fetch. Come on, deck. That wasn't it. I guess I just have to sit on this dam. Yeah, I'm basically dead to any discard spell. They kept the cards coming a lot better than I did here. There was a period where the board was stable to me ahead. Like I was it was very close. And I would have bet on myself. In that moment, the Vegas odds were in my favor, but immediately top deck to draw to. And now I'm not sure how I'm going to beat this Dash Dragavan ever. It can also get fear from Shizo. Oh. And this one. Sandbag this land for a reason. Okay, their hand is Ragavan. Their board is Season Pyromancer. And they can escape Crocs the next turn. Well, there's a way out of this. It involves this card, probably. Black. Blue, blue, blue. I think I have to draw cards first. Counterspell and damn. All right. Yeah, I'm dead. Well, it, they can't dash Ragavan and... Right, yeah, they can't cast Ragavan and escape 
Roxa. I get to survive another turn here. This player discards a card. I lose this island. Oh, they chuck their rag. That's horrific. They have two. Do they have lightning bolt? What's the line here? Machine gunning crocs at me now. I'm pretty hyped about this turn of events. Unless their last card in hand is also just like a lightning bolt or a second ragavan. They just gave up a way to kill me. All right. Not going to matter now. I bought an extra turn. It won't be enough. Each player discards a card and then they dash ragavan. Okay. Yep. That one does it. GG's. Yeah, that was a scrappy mid-range fight. They're just built a little better to do that sort of thing. I'm built to sort of pinch the the engines of the format, and they're and they're sort of built to beat up the engines of the format. Like we're both approaching the format in from the same angle, just with wildly different ways, and their ways lines up a little better than mine. Sweet match though. Cool deck. I'm on the play in round number four. I have a thought seize into drown in the lock situation here. I'll keep it. Even get an untapped Hall of Storm Giants. Life is good. Great to 15 again. Show me that Boros Charm. Ooh, Spell Stutter Sprite and Drown in the Lock Brazen Borrower. We're playing against fairies. This is neat. I'm taking Spell Stutter Sprite probably. Yeah, like who does Drago favor here? I hope the answer is me. Whatever. Taking your Spell Stutter. Please don't top deck Bitter Blossom. Another Drown in the Lock. I can counter a one drop. They thought, oh, Hall of the Storm Giants off the top. Mirror match, baby. Yeah, I'm going to play Flooded Strand. Counterspell's really nice. Now I can actually fight over a Bitter Blossom if they end up having one of those. I'll fetch a Watery Grave here. I'm going to need double black, double blue to play the game I want to play. Oh, of course I need triple black now. And I will shock this in. I think having. I think this game's going to come down to, like, one specific fight over something more than it's going to come down to two life points. And having two pieces interaction up is really nice in that world. There's Ottawara. Now I need to hit... Oof. Okay. Um, those two Drown in the Locks are tough. I'm just going to have to draw a go here. When you start hitting land drops in these control mirrors, it's when things start to get disappointing. And... I guess I want to counterspell this. And I don't really want to, but I uh, need to get the second thing in their graveyard that gives me Drown on Bitter Blossom. If they start a fight this turn and end up tapped out, I get to jam Turok and or Soren. Well, not and. It's Turok or Soren. Okay, cool. Unpunished. But they are playing a flash game that my deck is not as good at. So Snapcaster does help in that regard. Neither of us have a land drop. So we're both playing this uh this flash game. I think I'm just gonna deploy a Snapcaster Mage, just naked little Snapcaster in the end step here. I actually could have gone one turn longer without doing that. Whoops. I didn't want to go to discard, but I wasn't going to anyway. I should have waited one more turn on that. Alright, I'm pushing for damage now. We're doing stuff. And now I can fatal push and drown drown. When I get into Turok, Drown, Drown, or Turok with Drown back up, then things get more interesting. There's the Bitter Bee. Counter target spell. Black, blue. I'm going to try to clear the way for the Turok or the Sorin here. All right. They were unable to fight over that or chose not to. Very interesting. If I draw a land, I'm going for it here. I did not draw a land. It's okay. He currently can't drown me in the lock. I'm just going to pass. Spell Stutter. I'm going to Fatal Push that immediately. I'm going to start a fight in the end step. I'm going to Thought Scour them. I know they have Drown. There's one, two Spell Stutters left in their deck. If we had end up in a fight where they Spell Stutter, I Drown Spell Stutter, they Drown my Drown, they're going to win that fight, but then I untap and jam. Ooh, whenever you cast another spell, that's a Flash Draw card, each opponent loses life. That's a sick card. Never seen that one in my life. This thought sees is pretty hot. If I find one more land, one, two, three, four, five, six, I can thought seize and then cast one of my fours with drown backup. So the land does have to be black. Do I even have that many black lands in the deck? 
Uh, no, there's only two watery graves. Okay, so that polluted delta can't actually get a black source. I have to draw one naturally. That means this slot sees is not getting better. Oh no, they have the spell starter now. Okay, I am not going to fight over this. Yeah, this is not the spot. Unfortunate. Yeah, there should be another watery grave in this deck. The Dark Slurk Shores are, like, cute, but if you're doing a, like, mid-to-long game fetch land mana base situation, those should probably just be watery graves. Urborg unlocks the hand. Funkin' Ruins unlocks the hand. Like, I do... There are deck-building concessions to how black-heavy this deck actually is. All right, I'm going to fetch now since I know I can't get a black source anymore. Just get a tap hallowed fountain. Try to get set up there. Snapcaster attack. They didn't attack with spell stutter, which means they're probably trying to block. And I would prefer that universe. Yeah, super disappointing that the deck isn't built slightly differently. Or I didn't draw slightly different lands. Literally can't even kick to rock. I'll get the last hallowed fountain out of the deck. I could just cast to rock. They still have both of those drowns in their hand. Now I, I'm going to wait. Doesn't really help or do anything. Card's really bad for me. Does cost double black, though. Oh, that's lucky. They have counterspell. Nope. Okay, good. Shocked in Watery Grave. That makes sense. Unearth. Oh, jeez. That's gross. Whenever you cast a spell that has flash. Okay, so has flash. Not just instant, but has flash. That's a, a pretty different thing. There's an extra black source. Prismatic ending. Blue, white, black. There's one of the drowns. Then I can pop Turok in here without kicker. This can at least interact in combat if they choose to let it stick. And there's the extra black source for Soren. Yeah, this whole game brought to you by questionably constructed mana bases. Are they going to start activating their hall? Ramming? Or creeping tarpets probably better? Oh, well, yeah, that card has flash, doesn't it? Yeah, they can snapcast our unearth, get another slither wisp. Okay, yeah. The window for this game to happen has passed. We could probably pretty safely activate creeping tarpet here. But I guess why would you? Okay, one, two, three, four, Soren. And I can I can snap drown after I Soren. If four mana up, I know there's a drown over there. Thousand percent. Snapcaster is live right now. Alright, I'm going in on the Soren. I'm not sure if they even care about this thing. They could just let it resolve, and then I either draw a card, make a two, three, and then it dies to Creeping Tar Pit. Yeah, they went with Snapcaster instead. So I am going to resolve my Soren. But I am just miles behind on board and bleeding out to these slithers. And I guess they could have forced a negation still to make this not even happen. Subtlety. Yeah, that works too. That's a flash creature. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. Slither Wisp is unbeatable. Noted. It'll push important here. I don't know that I want dress downs. Like dressing down a spell stutter is pretty cool and a snapcaster, but the card is very clunky. Dam could be important. I'm just thinking about a world where uh, I have Teferi in play, or the Slither Wisp thing also is important to kill and is a 3 2 creature. They do have some graveyard activity between the snapcasters and the unearths. Tarak actually seems really bad here. Most of their good cards appear to be creatures. I'm not in on Dovin's Veto. I don't think I saw any discard, which doesn't mean they don't have it. It just means I didn't see it. Uh, one Surgical, one Turok out. Dam and Fatal push in. Veto can help me win counter wars, but many of their things are creatures, like we said. Okay. I think Teferi is going to be an important part of this game plan. This is one of those decks that just crumbles to a Teferi, but it's really hard to beat if you don't have one. All right, Thoughtseize Surgical with Teferi. I'm going to keep. Do I think they have Spell Pierce is the question. But I guess if I Thoughtseize, like I could wait a turn, let them draw one card, and then there'd be another card in there. Ooh, two Slithers. Don't mind if I do. Stop being your draw step. Let's get those out of your deck and an extra card out of your hand. Draw step. 
extract them slithers. Probably could have waited on that. I just really want this to resolve. And we're going to screenshot the deck while we're chilling here. Got two Force of Negations, two Mystical Disputes, one in hand. March of Wretched Sorrow. X to target creature, plane target, you get life fire. That's a removal spell. Three Better Blossoms. Four Subtlety. Yikes. Okay. And they drew Spell Stutter for turn. Did the Water to Grave and shipped it. All right, deck. It is time for you to produce a white source right off the top. I mean, I'll take any land. I'm not greedy, but how about a white source? White mana? Okay, we did it. I can Archmage Charm to draw cards in the end step, see if that flushes out the Mystical Dispute, and then if I can get this Teferi in for Gucci. That's Shock for Hallowed Fountain. Draw two cards. Can't Spell Stutter this. They can Dispute it, but then Teferi gets to party. Cool. I think Teferi will be worth more than two cards over the course of this game. They just don't have the other Mystical Dispute. And they don't play actual counter spell. Right, yeah, just playing the spell stutter, making me use my Teferi here. Fair enough. Expect it. Yep, pressure that boy. All of the Storm Giant. That costs six to activate. We're a ways away from that. I'm gonna fetch another white here. Another surgical. There's only one mystical dispute in their deck. Don't care about that. And I think I'm just gonna tread water against the spell stutter for a little while. Just plus to fairy, to fairy takes one, plus to fairy, to fairy takes one. I'm not going to prioritize removing this thing. But I guess I could just prismatic ending it and start getting to fairy up into the sky. Okay, yeah, fine. I'll do that. How quickly plans change. I was thinking I just want to draw cards, but I can do that next turn. Brazen borrower. Okay. I guess I could have snapped thought seized in combat. Make sure something like that doesn't happen. But I can snap brazen or snap. Prismatic ending this turn. I'm going to fetch a basic land. I know I had all sorts of mana problems last game, but I am a little worried about my life total getting cheesed out here. Prismatic ending. White, blue, black. Get rid of Brazen B. Ground in the lock, main phase. Got it. One card left in hand, and it's Takanuma. No creatures to pick up with it. Takanuma, discard, mill three, then return a creature or planeswalker from graveyard to your hand. One, two, three. All right. I do have enough to drown in the lock hall and pay the ward. And I feel like that's probably their plan more than a YOLO Takanuma. Because you can use Takanuma when nothing's going on. It's mill three, then return. Right, yeah, they're, they're going for the hall. Bum, 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 bum. That's the Hall of the Storm Giants theme song. Yeah. Let's get rid of that. Guess I should have waited till combat. They could have floated a blue there. Ooh, Snapcaster. That's good with my Teferi. I'm going to plus Teferi for now. Then I can do Snapcaster shenanigans. Do I want to Thought Seize their draw step or leave up a counter spell? I don't think I need to Thought Seize the draw step. Okay, I can snap Archmage Charm, draw two, attack for two, Teferi bounces Snapcaster, and we're cooking. March of whatever the hell this is. Uh, X equals five. So if the Thought Scour you, get six cards into your graveyard. So I drew Drown in the Lock, that's nice. Yeah, this is mana value six right now because X equals five, and then Snap Drown will get you for Xaxes. Dang, cool. That worked out nicely. And attack for two, reset Snapcaster. Feeling good about this one. Yeah, they agree. <laughs> Just, they know when they're beat. Okay. Yeah, that was the Teferi-centric game plan I described last time. Also, that turn one, Thoughtseize Surgical on there. The card their deck is built around was pretty nice. They do have three Bitter Blossoms. I have two Prismatic Endings that can reasonably fight that thing. Don't. Really want to bring in engineered explosives just to respect a token army. I do have the two dams for that. Okay. I'm going to go in with the same deck. I am not going to keep a single black mana here. Mulligan. All right. This one, this one's a heater. Keep this. Send to rock. 
I can thought seize my way into Teferi here, and I can fight over Bitter Blossom because I have the thought seize before the blossom comes in. And I am thought seizing now before Spell Stutter and gets online and Bitter Blossom comes down and all of these horrible things. Spell Stutter does not counter Teferi. Neither does Drown in the Lock right now. Yeah, I can just hit this Mystical Dispute and try not to put any other cards in my graveyard. This is a, a bold strategy, but I'm going for it. Slither Wisp just wants the spell to have Flash, by the way. It doesn't need to be cast on an opponent's turn or any such. Like, you don't actually have to Flash it, it just has to have Flash. Right, Hall of Storm Giants and pass. There's the Polluted Delta. Alright, Moment of Truth. Did you draw another answer to Teferi, or is he in there? Teferi. Drown doesn't get it, Spellstarter doesn't get it. Two mystery cards in the hand. We know they play two Mystical Dispute, no counter spell. Right, they're casting spells here. It's displaying. Oh, Snapcaster, that was a good one. Fuck my life into pieces. This was my last resort. Okay. That was a good draw. Wish I had the surgical. Okay, that will probably embolden them. Like, I can answer the, the slither. Okay, let's see how patient they want to play the game. Oh, look who decided to show up. If I snap Thoughtseize, then they can spell stutter in response. Then I can fatal push spell stutter, then they can drown. Yeah, that's not good. You could also just drown the snapcaster. I think I'm going to pass here. Try to get some action off this Fatal Push on their turn. And if they just jam the Slither here, I can fetch and Fatal Push it. Okay, uh, I am going to need additional black mana this game. I'm going to fetch Shock. Let's take my medicine. There were two Force of Negations in their deck. Let's hope they don't have one right now. If they do not have one right now. And I can Snap Fatal Push their Snap. And then also extract their slithers. Snapcaster. Fatal push. Push your snap. Now you're suddenly behind on a board where a second ago you were ahead. And I know their hand is drowned in spell stutter. I don't think the surgical is getting better. Just cut their engine out from under them. Last card in hand was a slither. Fuck yeah. Actually spiked it. Two soul guide lanterns. Two Nile spell bombs. They went heavy on graveyard hate here. A cling to dust also. Okay. We certainly have not won this game, but that was a really fortunate hit on that spell starter. Opponents complaining in the chat that I only placed two surgical. Joke's on you. I have three. <laughs> Technically. In the 75. I'm going to attack with Snapcaster. If they want to trade off spell starter, that's a fine deal for me. Try to get my Storm Giants awakened here before they have five mana. Four spells in the hand, though. <laughs> You only play two surgicals. You're not wrong. Kinda. Kinda wrong. Kinda right. This one's a lot worse, though. I could change the number of cards in my graveyard by surgicaling myself, but I guess the surgical would end up in the graveyard, too. Subtlety. Okay. Reach or a Planeswalker spell. Yeah, that's not a thing that you have. Um, do I want to eat up these Snapcasters? Do I want to do anything? I think I'll just pass. There's no, there's no spells to snap anyway, and if they find one, I can snap the spell, or I can extract the spell, so I'm not going to just aggro go after Snapcaster here. A Drown in the Lock over there is trouble. Oh. So I can dam the Subtlety, they drown it, and then I slam to Fairy. Should filter mana here. Blue, the black, black. Damn. Ottawara Aang, they're big idiot. Okay. That also taps them out for Teferi. Fucking deal. Yeah, that's great. That's honestly correct. Right, Dam is countered. And then they're going to have to itch this subtlety now. Lose two cards in their hand. So I'm going to get the Ottawa, the subtlety, and like whatever the hell out of their hand here. Because they can't beat Teferi. Ooh, they let it happen. I'm going to bounce my snap. And his Subtlety, Spell Stutter Sprite, Drown in the Lock. Don't you, like, have to Subtlety pitching Spell Stutter there and try to catch Teferi with Drown on the way back down? Because these cards aren't really doing anything else. 
I guess subtlety is a 3-3 flying. That's hard to kill. I do need to get revolt somehow if I want to kill it. No, I can snap damn. Never mind. I'm good. We're good. Nothing to worry about here. Yeah, subtlety bounce is a creature or planeswalker spell, not a creature or planeswalker. That's why that didn't work. Or that's why they aren't bouncing my Teferi, if you're not familiar with subtlety. The card might, might, might not be the most obvious. So I can snap dam and spell and uh, fatal push. That's pretty good. I wish I could just cast dam, but that's not how this works. Uh, blue, make black, black. And blue, blue, snapcaster mage, target dam. Damn. All oh, right, I can't overload damn from the graveyard anyway. We had a whole conversation about that. Just going to fatal push the spell starter now. Let's keep this board clean. And they're going to go hellbent to kill my snapcaster. Easy money. Oh my god. Oh, uh, let's see that concession button. Slam it. A big T coming down. Counter spell in my hand. And that's the match. Okay. Yeah, both the games I won came down to Teferi Time Raveler. Turns out when your deck is built around a mechanic, such as Flash, and your opponent has a permanent that says spells can't flash, it really flips the dynamics. But that is the type of deck that could chew up a normal mid-range or control deck if they don't have something like Teferi to just nuke the plan. On to the final round. I'm on the play in the final round. Positive records locked. Playing for the bread and butter 4-1. We're against powerful modern wizard Ari Zax. I'm going to keep my hand and lead on Flooded Strand. Ari was one of the only people who beat me on my way to winning Grand Prix Columbus 2019, which is a modern tournament. And <laughs> he just said in the chat, wow, it's GP Columbus 2019 champion. It's true, it is. He knows all about that. I do need black mana here. I already have the white chill in. Damn counterspell. Ooh, Hall of Storm Giants. Right on time. Spire Bluff Canal, okay. Consider. Looks like we got a little Merc Tide action here. Liked the card. Off Consider. I like when you put cards in your graveyard. Uh, Raggy Daddy. I can drown this right now. Yeah, I like drowning this now. Counterspell stays good even after they eat the graveyard with Merc Tide. Okay, uh, Dark Slits Shores is now or never. So I'm going to have to take two off this Hallet Bound eventually, unfortunately. I have two answers to Merc Tide, three if you count the Snapcaster Mage, sending it all back for another spin. There's no reason to hold up four mana here. I guess Counterspell. No, that doesn't matter. It's something like Spell Pierce, but mostly whatever on that front. It's a draw two. Yeah, that's not the fight I get to fight. I have to fight the Merc Tide Regents. Yeah, you know me. I guess uh, Snap Drown would have been pretty decent here. I'm going to counterspell one of these. No, I have Dam in my hand. I can literally Dam the board next turn. And then Snap Dam a Merc Tide. I could also just borrow one of these. Hold up Counterspell. Uh, do I think that... I don't know if these decks play Spell Pierce right now, honestly. Uh, I bet I can get Turok in right now, but then I can't Dam anymore. Ooh, that's tough. I'm going for Turok. Hasn't shown up yet this league. It's time. Might even hit the Murktide Regent. Might even give him Delirium. <laughs> hit two Lightning Bolts. Let's hope those were the two answers to Turok in hand. Gain six life. And if he does follow up with Murktide Regent, then I can damn with counter back up. Oh, the third Lightning Bolt. Got me good. Surveilled a creature. Surveilled another creature. Still not Delirious. I'll take my two. Playing patient, playing appropriately. Inquisition. Yeah, let's let's have a peek. Tell me your secrets. Counterspell, expressive iteration, and two Merktide regions. That's pretty good. I'm gonna take the iteration. Does that make them delirious? It does actually. Does that matter? That's the follow up question. I could take counterspell and snap drown one of the BRCs right now. Yeah, these channelers becoming delirious. Instant creature land, yeah. The EI sets them off, but they'll be big if they if he casts EI next turn too. I have 
creature instant land. Mine would also not be delirious. I think I have to take EI. And then I can try to have a fight on his turn. Do I want to damn one of these? Like, I kind of have to get him into a place where he's casting Murktide Regent. I can snap drown one of these in combat. Right, here's Snapcaster. Trying to start a fight on his turn using my life total as a resource. Yeah, just moving in on Counterspell here. Right, that's gone. Spell Pierce confirmed. Uh, having Snapcaster Mage in play doesn't actually help me, so I'm going to save my Counterspell. And that's gone. This would be a great turn to draw a white source. That's a good card. Okay, uh, white, blue, blue, the fairy. Dip one of these. Surgical extraction, oh my god. There is a Dragon's Rage Channeler in the graveyard. Is there a Murktide Regent? No, there's not. My life is pain. Do I have another answer to the Murktides? I can clear that DRC from hand with the Surgical. It also puts me to 6 if I want to hold up Counterspell, which I actually do have to do. We're going to stop in the draw step over there. Exile Dragon's Rage Channelers from your deck. That'll teach you. One in hand, Counterspell that is currently blank due to Teferi, but Teferi will soon be dead. And land, so he gets to go. Kill Teferi, Murktide Regent. Alright, got it. Understood. Strong situation. Or he could just ignore me and kill my face. Didn't do that. Dam is live AF right now. Here comes a Murktide. I'm going to counter it. He's going to counter back. Or maybe he won't counter back. That's interesting. Like, just bet on this DRC carrying. So if you counterspell here, I can steal DRC. Then I have Dam for the last Murktide. All right, didn't fall for it. Smart. Seagate Stormcaller. Oh, baby. I can cast this card and then damn the Channeler twice. <laughs> God, this fucking card is so bad. Um, yeah, the, the not falling for the bait on Counterspell was what I was worried about here. I can damn DRC. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to damn this thing. He counters this, I can steal it. If he doesn't counter it, I am dead to Murktide all the same. Yeah, just the way he's played this, like really carefully leaving up the counter spell to help the Murktide at all times. That's how you want to do this. Well, counter target spell. I'm going to get counter spelled back, and then I need to draw a removal spell. Mapcaster Mage plays, Teferi plays, either Teferi plays. Soren even buys me time. Need something, though. Spell. Shit. And we're dead. All right, GG's. If Seagate Stormcaller was, like, any card. Yeah, unfortunately, no Murktide Regent was in the graveyard on that surgical turn, where I knew he had two Murktides in hand. Soul Guide Lantern. Beating up in this graveyard matters. Fatal Push, Dam are both good. I don't know that I need Dovin's Veto on top of all these other counter spells. Fucking Seagate Stormcaller. Yeah, without Cabal Therapy and him to Turok, this card is just embarrassing. Like, I think that the whole, like, main deck surgical extraction experiment has been, like, not the most embarrassing thing, but Seagate Stormcaller is just hot trash. I don't know that I want Vetoes. Engineered Explosives can clear DRCs and Ragavans. Chalice can shut down a lot of stuff going on in the deck. Surgical is actually pretty bad. My life total matters a lot. Dress down doesn't do anything. I probably do want chalice and explosives and just get all the way off surgical extractions. Extracting a Murktide region is really good because then the deck loses a lot of its potency. I have one, two, I have two real answers to Murktide region and then a bunch of ways to bounce it. I could cut. I kind of like all the discard. Tarak is kind of bad, actually. I'd rather have Engineered Explosives. They have so many Lightning Bolts in the deck that Tarak is just like a major clunker. Don't mind having one. There could be spots where he's good, but I don't want more than that. This is what I'm doing. I think this hand is fine. I'll keep it. 
I'm not going to get just cheesed by Ragavan. Got answers to that. There's Ragavan. I could. Yeah, I think I should Thought Scour. Going to shock in Hallowed Fountain. And I want to Thought Scour myself. Just Thought Scouring my opponent just seems like such a mistake when they use their graveyard so much. But do you have the Force of Negation to ruin my life? Nope. All right. Do you have the second Ragavan to ruin my life? Channeler. Right, we've seen Spell Pierce in the, in the list. I'm going to keep fetching Hallowed Fountains. Or right. this deck might have Blood Moon post board. I should give some respect to. He cracks this fetch land. I'm going to steal DRC in response. Or kill DRC in response. Steal? Kill. No. Yeah, I'm going to kill it. Uh, this leaves me wide open to... No, I am going to steal it. And play around Blood Moon a little bit. Yoink. Lightning Bolt that. Yeah, the two for one. Take it. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's not enough to Merc Tide. Counter Spell. Happy to see that one. I'll put Polluted Delta in. If I have to fetch Shock to Counter Spell plus Drown this turn, is what it is. Archmage Charm. I right, guess I'm fetch Shocking this turn. I don't want him pulling ahead on cards too far. Let's beat up on that. And my hand is super reactive, so I'm going to react. Yeah, I need something to push forward here, which my deck is pretty bad at doing. All right, just draw go. Five spells in his hand. That's how missing your land drops works. Found Ottawara. And his graveyard's pretty stocked at this point. I'm going to scour him. Yeah, that'll show you. <laughs> this, try to get Drown in the Lock up to a point where it can fight Merc Tide Regent. Fetch for the last Hallowed Fountain. Urborg's in play, so everything taps for black. Okay. Thought oh, sees you. I expect some sort of battle here. Five is a lot of spells, though. And if he waits long enough, he can just bolt me out. Alright. I'm not gonna fight that fight. There's now enough cards in the graveyard that even a fully delved Murktide can still... I can counter it, and then Drown can counter-counter. There's that. Counter spell. Because of my Urborg, he could force some negation here. Alright, I can pay for this, and then he can counter spell me. Alright, pretty good. And spell pierce. Alright, Murktide's in. Four cards in the graveyard. Need a removal spell right now. Alright, deck, help me out. Let's do it. <laughs> That'll show you. Uh, do I have seven colors in play? I don't believe that I do. All right, there's this, and I'm dead to Lightning Bolt. Yeah, the combination of stacking two soft counters on top of each other instead of going for one hard counter was the secret sauce there. Removal spell, please. Nope. All right. Counter spells, Murktide Regent, too good. Opponent picked the spots to make sure that he could protect the last Murktide Regent. The first Murktide Regent doesn't matter. Neither does necessarily second or third. It's the last one that matters, and he played accordingly. In retrospect, maybe I'm supposed to fight over the Thoughtseize and take the Murktide Regent, but it's hard to know how many soft counters you're playing against versus a hard counter, and my deck has lots of answers, just didn't find one. All right. This experiment, three and two, we did put up a positive record, which I think is more a statement in favor that Esper might be a fine set of control colors more than it is anything about surgical extraction. We did have some... Cool spots where Surgical really did cheese out opponents. Like that that poor Flash player and that poor Lantern player. Oh my god. We got a turn two win off of Thoughtsy Surgical and really collapse another player's engine with it. Like it, it was pretty cool. Uh, I think three. I, I don't actually endorse this as a strategy because the problem with surgicaling like people ask me this pretty regularly like why don't you just main deck surgical extraction you can take all their best cards like okay yeah but you have to survive the first wave of that best card first and surgical doesn't help you do that like you can just surgical all their murktide regions then it's hard to win okay how's the first murktide region getting in the graveyard and this deck is built with thought scour and thought seize to try to help that happen but if you just draw them in the wrong order, like we saw in that last game where I drew two counter spells after Murktide was already in play, 
uh, the game before that, we saw removal spells rotting in hand while my opponent sculpted up a perfect hand to beat my removal spells. Surgical Extraction did almost nothing in with the Dragon's Rage Channeler. And like sometimes you just miss. Like my opponent was hit with multiple Thought Scours. We played a really long game, cast a bunch of discard spells. It was like turn 10 ish, probably, when I drew Surgical, and there just wasn't a Murktide region in the graveyard. Sometimes the thing you need to exile isn't there. Like, I, I just don't like this as a strategy. However, that said, if your deck is built to shove cards into the graveyard with discard or mill before your opponent gets to cast the first round, and then you can strip them without having to see the first one, then it gets a little more defensible. That said, the lack of Him to Tarak and Court of Cunning in the modern format makes this archetype a lot worse makes it a lot harder to get cards into the graveyard. If your opponent doesn't naturally care about the graveyard already, which a lot of modern decks do, to be fair, then it becomes really hard to force them to care about the graveyard. Seagate Stormcaller just doesn't have spells worth doubling in the modern format, at least not in an archetype like this. If this thing had flash, maybe we're going somewhere, but it doesn't. If I were to continue working on this deck, I think like some sort of Esper mid-range deck is here, like under the surface. Like you could just play a normal deck without surgicals. But if you want to continue building on the surgical extraction main deck option, I would cut the two Seagate Stormcallers and one of the surgicals. I think two's plenty, and Stormcaller doesn't do anything. And then you can add probably the fourth to very time raveler and another Inquisition. You could add the fourth thought seize over the second inquisition. I just like to hedge against burn and decks that are trying to hurt you. I think this deck is already a million times better, just cutting those two blanks for two actual cards. And maybe a third fatal push or third prismatic ending. I'm going to go with ending just out of respect for Teferi on the other side of the board. And I'm going to leave this here. If you want to keep working on it, feel free to. Uh, oh, I wanted another watery grave over the. Second Sunken Ruins, probably. All right, yeah, a third fetchable Black Source. I remembered that one now. This is where I'm going to leave this after playing five matches with it. If you want to keep working on this, let me know how it goes. Post your list in the comments. Send thoughts of how you would improve various matchups. If we're worried about Murktide Regent, which was an identified problem at the start of the league, and I did stack a bunch more answers to Murktide Regent into the list, they just weren't enough. You could play another dam. You could play Doomblade. There's stuff you can put in this deck to respect Murktide Regent more than I currently do. And you probably want to. Now I'm going to sign off. King of the Depths, thank you for this kind of brew challenge thing. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the Patreon. See you in the Discord. And I'll talk to you next time.